Hi there, welcome back. Well, today we've got a very exciting episode for you. We're going to play General Ledger, an innovative game to learn accounting. I've been watching my kids for weeks, watching all these videos about uh, people who are playing Minecraft, uh, Temple Run, and all this other stuff. And my kids are mindlessly watching these videos for hours on end. So I said, why not play my own game and see if I can get the millions of views? Maybe get a few more downloads of my rap going on here. So that's my thinking. So let's see. If not, this might just be a good tutorial to teach you a little bit about accounting. So, uh, as we get to the entry screen, we say, let's take a look. So, you think you're a smart accountant? Hmm, let me think about that for a moment. Hmm, okay, let's go. Let's carry on. We'll see about that. You are about to work undercover for Acme Company, suspected of sponsoring terrorists. We need someone on the inside to understand the organization. Get the accounting right or risk blowing your cover. Good luck, soldier. Well, thank you very much. There's a briefing at 0600. If this is your first tour, I advise you attend. Ha, huh, this is not my first tour. This is more like my 400th tour through this game. So, let's just dive in and play a mission. Oh, let's see. We've got three choices. Get promoted, close the book, suicide mission. Hmm, as much as I'd like to take you on the suicide mission, I don't have time for that. That one takes about a half an hour to play. So, we're going to play get promoted and see if we can go all the way. Starting with our rank of private, our performance, we've got to answer 10 questions in this game in order to get promoted. So, the way you play this game is to read the journal entry at the top and then select the debits and credits that would answer this journal entry. Then hit done and see whether we've got it right or wrong. Alright, so the first one says to record the donation of inventory to a charity drive. Hmm, thinking about that, donation of inventory. So inventory is going out the door. To get inventory off our books, we've got to credit the account. Now to a charity drive, well typically those are recorded as donations, and donations show up as an operating expense of the business. Let's see if we've got it. Yeah, we did it. That rocks. Well done. Thanks for helping. Alright, next question. To record the principal only payment on a term loan. So, we're doing a payment. That's a, that's a clue that cash is leaving our bank account. And what are we paying the cash for? Well, we're paying it to pay down a term loan, which is a liability. In fact, it's a long-term debt. So that should get this one answered. Yeah, you the man. All right, we're rocking now. Two in a row. Let's see if we can keep it going. To record the purchase of a $30 labeling machine with petty cash. Wow, a $30. Do you want to reset that up as a fixed asset and depreciate that over five years? Absolutely not. 30 bucks, you're just going to expense that puppy. So expense, and because we paid out of petty cash, cash is going out the door. Wonderful. As you can see, the questions in level one are relatively straightforward. If you've, gone, if you've done your first year accounting principles course or you've done a bookkeeping course, you should be able to answer these questions. Next question, to record the receipt of an expected tax refund. Well, at that point, we probably have the receivable set up and we've received cash back from the government. And lo and behold, we are correct. Moving right along, to record the payment of the monthly general and administrative payroll. Well, payment means cash is leaving our bank account, and who are we paying it to? Well, the employees, and the employees typically are recorded as an operating expense of the business. Moving right along, to record the payment of an account's payable invoice to a supplier. So this time it's already been recorded and set up as a liability, so now we're paying off that liability. So to get the liability off of our books, we need to set up a debit to our journal entry, and we're paying cash, so cash is once again leaving our bank account and a direct hit. To record the payment of income taxes payable for a company using the cash basis of accounting. Ooh, cash basis of accounting. Tricky, tricky. When you're using the cash basis, we're only focused on cash coming in and out. So here, payment means cash is leaving, therefore we also need to just to find a debit. And the debit would be to current income tax expense. Moving right along, to record the purchase of a photocopier by writing a company check. Well, when you write a company check, that's the same same sort of thing as saying, I'm paying it with cash. Now, this is not a labeling machine. This is a photocopier. These things are not cheap. These things may cost a couple thousand dollars. So that's going to be set up as a capital asset because it lasts more than a year. At least it hopefully does. Not unless it's one of those cheap no generic brands. Uh, okay, next we're going to adjust the perpetual inventory records for good ship to a customer. So goods have already gone out, the sales already been recorded, now we got to get the inventory off the books. Get that clue, inventory has to get off the books. So we got to take inventory, which is typically a debit balance, credit it to, get, to lower it. The offset is going to be recorded to cost of sales. Moving right along, 
And this is the last question. Can we do it to record the declaration and payment of a shareholder dividend? <sighs> so we declared and paid. So cash once again is leaving the the business. But where do we put the dividend? Well, dividends get paid out of retained earnings. And so that should be our debit. And lo and behold, it is. Excellent. Woohoo! We did it! Yeah, I'm going to do a little happy dance if I keep doing this. We're now up to the rank of sergeant. Let's carry on. Next level. So now we're at the rank of sergeant. So you should be thinking about these questions have a lot to do with intermediate accounting. They're getting a little bit more complex. So this one says to record the volume rebates earned by a customer during the period. Hmm, volume rebates earned. So those are going to be accrued for a period. They typically get a paid out to the customer at the end of the year if they achieve their volume targets. So we're going to set up an accrual for that. And when it does get paid out, ultimately it's going to be a discount on the sale. So it's going to reduce sales. So lo and behold, yes, we are indeed Rambo. <laughs> All right, next one. Do accrue income taxes payable for the period? Accrue, accrue. So accrue would be to set up an accrual, a provision for income taxes for the period. So we only file our income tax um, returns once a year. And so uh, throughout the year, we're going to set up uh, a current uh, tax expense with an accrual provision. All right, moving right along to the next one. It says to record the proceeds received from the sale of a bond investment plus the accrued interest. So we've sold off an investment. So we're going to credit the investment account and we're going to collect cash because that's the proceeds we received. However, there's a clue here. There's a second line of journal entries. What could those possibly be? And it pertains to plus the accrued interest. So when you sell a bond investment, intra uh, period between when the uh, interest is payable and, and the date you've sold it, you now have accrued in interest, which would still be recorded as investment income. And lo and behold, we are correct, because we are awesome. All right, to record the payment of a security deposit as required by a lease. So paying a security deposit typically gets set up as a prepaid expense. And because there's a payment, it's cash coming out of our bank account. That's correct, a direct hit. To record the provision of a future warranty cost. So we sold something, but we've sold it with a warranty. Well, typically warranty provisions are going to be set up as an operating expense with a provision set up for future warranty costs. And lo and behold, we are correct. Uh, adjust prepaids for the expired portion of insurance. Now, this is a fairly straightforward exercise because as we paid for our insurance or set up the premium, we would have set it all up as a prepaid expense. And then as each month passed by, we would reduce the prepaid expense and we re would record the operating expense for the expired portion of the insurance cost. Moving right along to record the payment of a supplier invoice within the discount period for inventory recently purchased and still held. Aha! So we're paying an invoice. So an invoice is a payable that's on our system. We gotta get it off the system. So a liability to get rid of that, we need to debit the payables. We are making a payment in cash, but we're actually getting a discount. So it's probably something, one of those terms that says two net 10. So we get a 2% discount. Where does that discount get recorded? So, uh, in this case, it's going to reduce the amount of the inventory because the inventory is still being held. Yeah, we got it. All right, adjust for earned but unpaid wages at the end of the period. So, uh, the employees have worked for a few days and uh, we will set up an accrual for the wages that they've earned during that period, but we won't be paying those wages until the next pay period, which is typically going to be uh, a week or so after the end of the period. So it's not going to be cash, it's going to be some sort of an operating expense. Moving right along. To record the provision for inventory shrinkage and obsolescence. So inventory's got to go down because it's shrinking. So inventory to go down would need to credit that account. And obsolescence. Hmm, how would the inventory go obsolete and where would we record the expense? Probably through cost of sales. Yeah, that sounds good. Now, moving right along to record the receipt of a contractor's invoice for rearranging equipment in the plant. So, we've got an invoice, so we've got to set that up in the payables. But the question is whether we capitalize or expense this kind of thing. Well, just for rearranging the equipment, I don't see any future benefit uh, associated with that. So, I'm going to expense it. Nicely done, we rock. Woohoo! Yeah, we're at Lieutenant now! Lieutenant, can you believe it? Lieutenant! Alright, we are now getting into the hard stuff. Let's keep going. 
We're now at the lieutenant level, which is, you should be thinking advanced accounting by this point. So you're probably in your third or fourth year, or maybe even in a professional program, trying to figure these ones out. To record the 4% interest in investee earnings, investment is classified as fair value through other comprehensive income. <gasps> Boy, that's a mouthful just to even read to you. Well, you have to know how to record uh, investment income from fair value through other comprehensive income. In this case, uh, we only record when we receive dividend income and any changes in the fair value of the investment. So there really isn't an entry to make here for the 4% interest in earnings. Haha, ha, tricky, huh? Yeah, that one took us a little while. Okay, to record a foreign currency gain on cash used using a foreign functional currency. Holy crap, these are hard. I don't even know the answer to this one. To record a foreign currency gain on cash. So cash has got to go up, right? Uh, using a foreign functional currency. A foreign functional currency, well, this means it's kind of a standalone investment. It's, so our only exposure is to the investment itself. And typically we record these through as a, as a separate section of accumulated other comprehensive income. Oh, am I good or what? I've played this game a few times. To record the conversion of a convertible bond into common stock. Holy crap, these are hard. I gotta get rid of long-term debt because that's the convertible bond. But the convertible bond was probably split up into two pieces. So there may actually be a little bit of contributed surplus to get rid of as well. And then I gotta set up the capital stock that gets issued. Oh yeah, we rock. <laughs> I wasn't sure about that one. To record the lessee's monthly payment of the finance lease. Ah, so a finance lease is like, this is being recorded as a long-term debt on our our balance sheet so we're gonna to have to re reduce the long-term debt and at the same time when we pay that 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 payments gonna be a blended payment of debt and interest and of course when you're making a payment cash has got to go out the door to make the payment yes ah, now we're cruising right along to record the purchase of a bond for investment purposes with a coupon rate of five percent and a yield of four percent oh my god you gotta think about this one so investment purposes well we are recording an investment and we purchased it, so there's cash. Uh, what about this notion of the 5%, 4%? That's a red herring. To record the forfeiture of stock options due to the departure of an employee. Whoo, boys. Wow, there's two situations that, that happen here. Either they expire or the employee departs. And I can never get these straight. But when they depart, I believe... These things have been recorded in contributed surplus when they got set up. And I believe you can record them when the employee it leaves yeah you can all right we're good to record interest costs paid in cash to finance raw material costs in inventory so the question here is whether interest costs uh, get capitalized to inventory or whether they should just be recorded as an expense well I think if you actually read the section of the handbook I believe is it interest expense or is it inventory that gets debited I am kind of torn, to be honest with you. I'm going to go with inventory because it just feels like that. Uh, and it's been paid, so cash is going. We could be. I got a 50-50 chance. Yeah, we got it. So anytime you incur interest directly associated with the purchase of inventory, those get capitalized to the cost of inventory. Next, to record the an increase in the value of an investment classified as a fair value through profit and loss. <sighs> All right, this we're getting close to the end. So if the investment value is going up, because it's increased in value, the question is, where does the gain or loss? Well, it tells you. It says it went through profit and loss. So the gain or loss gets recorded there. All right. To adjust for a bonus entitlement of staff for the period. So your accrual is going to go up, and uh, you're going to increase your, uh, where's your operating expenses? Because we're going to accrue the bonus throughout the period as income is generated. All right. To apply recorded tax losses from prior years against current taxable income. So these are recorded tax losses. So that means they're sitting as a deferred income tax asset on our balance sheet at this point. So to apply them, that asset has got to go down. And when that asset goes down, you're going to credit the asset. You're going to have to debit the expense deferred income tax style. And away we go. You hit the target. Whoa, we did it. Time for the happy dance. All right, there we go. We made it. We are all hail General Ledger. We are awesome. Thank you for tuning in. 
Download the General Ledger app today and happy learning saving the world from the Acme Terrorist Organization.